afternoon, everybody. How are you? Brooklyn guy, you know who I am. You'll be coming in because you have my uh, time stamp at 405. My guest, my dear friend for over almost 40 years, That's right. Jeff Green. How are you doing, buddy? Good, Vinny, and you're right. Almost 40 years. But uh, you scary. look you look great, and you're still one of the most years. sincere, best guys I've ever known. Oh, I appreciate that. I, I have to send you a cash app for saying that. You know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> no checks, Vinny. <laughs> You know, <laughs> oh, boy. well, that wasn't from me. You know, um, I got to tell you, you moving to Florida, A, I could never imagine you being a Floridian. Because back then, we thought, I think you probably did too, Floridians is older people. Like when you're Jewish, when you turn 65, it's the law, you have to go there. Now, it's kind of, well, we are almost 65. Uh, how do you think, A, Florida has changed now, say, over the last 35 years, if you know. And then how have you adjusted to it being a New York guy, although you were in San Diego for a while when you were 30 years old? Well, now, how do you think it's changed? It's a lot of questions, man. It'll take a while, but I'll tell you the truth. First of all, I went, I went to the University of Miami in 1973. Okay. So, and I had come down here numerous times. So I always liked Florida. And you're right. I never saw myself. I love Tina and I love to travel, but I never saw myself leaving New York for good. But with the ridiculous political situation and with the COVID and the immigrants and the crime and the lack of, you know, support for police, just, you know, Nicholas, Tina and I got on and we started looking at places and I said, come on, let's go down and look. We came down and uh, we spent 11 days in a hotel. We saw everything, everybody. And if you remember, this is the ironic part. You know, Omar was a good friend of mine. And, Omar and I are people. Yeah. And he said to me, he goes, he goes, Bear, I'm going to give you three places to look at. And we were on the last one. They were all over 55 communities, all gated, beautiful. And originally, you know, we, we thought, well, we'll look at Delray. Well, we'll look at Boca. We'll look at Boynton. But you know what? They're getting very crowded. So we focused on Port St. Lucie which the Mets used to call Port St. Lousy in 86. Mm -hmm. And it's just a different world. I mean, first of all, almost everybody down here is a New Yorker, believe it or not. Um, yeah. It's, we love it. I, 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 I feel we're blessed. We found a perfect environment, a perfect place to live uh, and the perfect spot. Now, that being said, uh, the building they're doing here is ridiculous. That that's, I, when you come down, then you'll see there are, there are hundreds and hundreds of homes and apartments and new communities going up. So I fear what the infrastructure will be within the next two to three years. But you know what? I feel like it's paradise. I wish you could see uh, behind me my, my backyard and we love the people. And like, it's, it's great, Vinny. I recommend it. I listen, I tried to get you down here with your family. I know if you're available within two weeks, probably I'm going to come down just for three days. You just say hi. Yeah, that's I'm looking fine. to get away for a couple of days. Hey, the truth and Emmanuel, fans of mine, this is a really great guy. Uh, if you go back to my one of my first interviews, Jeffrey. Now we're not going to cover that stuff, although we could sprinkle it in. Um, I met you. I will just tell people so you don't have to go through the whole video before. Uh, I came on a dead night at shout. Jeff was an icon in the New York security scene. Had his own team would go to many venues, China Club, knows all the stars, could tell you stories about Eddie Murphy. You can go back to that, but we'll sprinkle in a couple for the new timers, um, newcomers. I met him. Uh, I walked in with my friend. It was empty. I walked out. I'm giving you a quick version. Said, my God, I, I thought it was crowded. So he said, no, no, right now it's not. A it might have been a Jewish holiday or something. But he said, uh, you know, usually it's packed full of girls and stuff. I said, God, I'd love a job. He had worked for free. He said, you want one? <laughs> a couple of days later, I, I beeped them. There were beepers back then. People started yeah. working. We became immediate friends. We had a lot of the same interests. Um, he showed me the ropes. He took me under his wing. Uh, I was blessed when Jeff went down there. Right before he went down there to live with his beautiful wife and son, uh, I met for the first time in over 35 years, Jack Stickney, who has passed. God rest you. We're talking about you. You're a wonderful guy very close to Jeff. He was the owner of Shout at the time. I was blessed. And I remember uh, the last story I'll tell you about it is Jeff said, listen, I don't think he remembers you. He may. 
but if he offers to pay for your meal, he likes you. <laughs> and as soon as I the check came, I said, all right, how much will he? he goes, no, 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 it's on me. And I went, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, Jack would never let us pick up a tab. And I'm sure he's up there in heaven with his brother, Bob. And he's telling the bartender, uh, give me a Smirnoff, ice, cold glass, no vegetables. Yeah, you know? he had a Tesla that I drove in, a uh, beautiful car. And uh, he had a twin who passed away a few years before. And yeah. Jack would always say, he said to me, and, and I wasn't that close to him. He said, um, you know what? If God takes me now, I'm fine. Yeah, Jack, Jack had a great life. And then I wish you could have seen him again because he stayed at this bar in his last days. And he'd sit at the end of the bar. And there was a gold plate right where he sat. It said, you know, Jack's and it was stick. They made it like his spot. And, um, you know, he, uh, he, got a, he had a great life. I mean, he really did. We had a lot of fun in Vegas and Atlantic City and, yeah. you know, on the boat trips. But, you know, um, he really liked you. And um, I liked him. Yeah. So, I yeah, really Florida Vinny is definitely the place to go, as you can see, because they've had so many people migrate down here uh, from the north, more so than any other state, with Texas being a close second. But yeah, it's like you we had spoken about everybody that first of all, the drivers down here are terrible for the most part, because most a lot of the people are old. But, you know, you deal with yeah. them. Pickleball is the big thing. I was going to ask you, do you have to within the first year learn pickleball to throw you out of there? No, you, it's, it's, you. They won't throw you out. Some, you know, I play. We play pickleball. We play stickball. But I will tell you one thing. I've learned in these communities that you have to be a half an alcoholic. I mean, you know, you know me, Vinny. When I so we have I, no problem with that, Jeff. Yeah, hey, <laughs> I was never. Problem. I was never a big drinker. No, I know I, you weren't. I still don't drink brown whiskey, brown liquor. But I've learned the difference between sipping tequila and mixing tequila, and you know. I, Everybody down here drinks. I mean, Tina's become her. She makes her Tina Tina special drink, which we can't give the ingredients. Okay. And you know, every weekend we, we go places. It, it's great environment, great camaraderie. I can't wait till you come down. Well, the difference in sipping and and really in slurping is when you walk out of the bar, you're brushing something off your shoulder, and it's the floor. <laughs> it's the difference. <laughs> no, but believe believe it or not, Vinny. A, a tequila like Cornitos is a mixing tequila, but there are other tequilas like the Don Julio 1942, which is ridiculously expensive that you sip. Like, you know, some tequila you can shoot down, not that. You got to savor it and take your time. So yeah, you see, I've become very knowledgeable and educated. Now That's cool. getting scary now that you are. Yeah. Jeff, I got to ask you a question that my friend Taylor asked. Are you familiar with the cabaret law and did it affect the clubs you worked at at all in the 80s? In New York? Yeah. What was the cabaret law? That you had to have a special license if they had entertainment? I, Vinny, I don't know anything about that. As long as you had a liquor license. I think know, if you I had mean, entertainment. But we, we had, had the band. We, and well, don't forget, when we had Jukebox, we had that small stage, which was, which could only hold maybe four people. And we put the Drifters up there, the Shirelles. And I'm quite sure that uh, we didn't have any special licensing. That I can't tell you about because the SLA, the State Liquor Authority, has certain rules. And, um, but you were there, you saw it, Zena, and we had the dancers, we had the, we had entertainment, you know, so. It's it's hard. The Grease Band, the Wednesday yeah. night's Grease Band. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question for Taylor. I'll answer oh, that's okay. she has. Um, so now that you've moved down to Florida, now you were in Florida during your college days, so you were 21, 22. Right. You saw the club atmosphere. I'm sure you went to the club. Oh, God. Jade I... in San Diego. Jeff used to go to Mexico, buy stuff that they didn't have in San Diego, and push it. Jeff was a, a money make. I remember the, the car in front with La Tigra shirts, where if someone came oh, in, yeah. they could have a shirt. They <laughs> sold it for 20 bucks. <laughs> That's right. It cost me five. We made, more, we made more money than Jack, the owner. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you a question. What is the big difference now? If you had to head up and you had your own security team of guys you would go to, what is the difference now with the security, do you think, in a club, a, a South Beach, whatever, opposed to when you were running it in New York in the 80s, 90s? Totally different environment. First of all, I wouldn't do it uh, with the advent of pills and fentanyl and minors. You know, they're a lot stricter down here. I'll say that. And police okay. can a police can work in the clubs, which they can't do in New oh. York. You know, know but but to be honest with you, I wouldn't do it. I mean, what I did when I segued out of, you know, China Club and Limelight, I went to Jekyll and Hyde and Harley Davidson Cafe, where it was a lot easier 
to have a security team and I could incorporate the police that worked with me. And it was a lot less stressful, you know, because the, the crowds were a little older. There was more family coming down right. here. I, you know, I do security with the Mets. So, but that's, it's a real easy gig. I mean, uh, it's easy, Vinny. I mean, the, I do it just to get out of the house. Tina plays pickleball three times a week, right. uh, seven thirty in the morning till like noon. Right. And I go, I go to the stadium and we ha- start the workouts actually next week on Wednesday. So fans come to see the players and I usher them to the backfields and tell them where to go and drive the players from batting practice to the fields. And, that's great. you know, and then when the games begin, I have my own, uh, that's not my own ramp where we take care of, uh, you know, the money and just make, make sure it's secure. So, but I wouldn't do it again, not at this age, because I can't get away from people that quickly. Well, this, this age, yeah. You know, but I could certainly put a team together and have the capabilities of and the knowledge to set things up. But, you know, Vinny, I'm nice and retired. I'm enjoying my retirement. Of course. So who needs the stress? You know, the biggest stress I have now is if I miss a shot at pickleball and Tina tells me we didn't get the point because of you. Or when I coach my kids in a self-pitch uh, baseball, you know, they don't like the way I pitch. It, it's it, I lo- we love it down here. We're blessed, man. Well, I'll tell you the thing that would say, and I don't care about politics. You know that I could give a damn less of it. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing, the thing that would bother me now is racial tensions. If you were trying to do your job in a club, you'd have a lawyer at your neck to tomorrow. Well, that, that's what would scare me. Well, up there in New York, that's surely still a problem. But I never, you know, never considered that a problem. I mean, we have a wonderful governor down here. I love Absolutely. the San- I love the Santis. I love the state of Florida, and you know, that's a really dicey question because we're still not at a point and I don't want to get political, but there are certain situations where the minorities are treated differently. And oh, it's absolutely. Not, and, oh, and, and, yeah, that's what I wanted to clear up before we go on. Yeah. Oppression. Anyone who says there wasn't is is not looking the right way. Of well, course I'm not, there was. I'm not, I'm not talking about oppression. I'm talking about like you but even with the dealing of, of minorities, absolutely. Right, but you can't assume that every individual of color is an issue or a problem. And absolutely. unfortunately, that's that's how it is in the minds of some people. Not me and not the people that worked with me, right. you know, and not you. Well, you wouldn't hire some. I, even back in the 80s when it wasn't the problem in the club scene, maybe outward it was in the world, but not in the club scene. I know you. You. You are very nice. That you could care less. You don't see skin color. You no. see a human being. No. I know you forty years. That and that's how I always was. Hundred percent. You know, Vinny. I mean, I'm not. I'm not gonna. If you're an a hole, you're an a hole. And I agree. It doesn't matter your your color, your creed, your ethnicity. And I was lucky enough, as you know, because you were one of them. You know, I, I had up to seventy five guys working at my. Peak. I know. And a lot of my guys were, I had some Latin guys, I had some some um, African-American guys, I had, even had a couple of Asian guys. You have to mix it in because the funny story is, and I don't even know if you know the story, when Mr. Trump came to um, shout and he asked his security to get me knowing that I ran security, I'd met him a couple of times. And What did you think of him, Jeff? I, well... This is a dicey question. I loved Trump. Well, it's a I mean, long I, time ago, too. He's probably a different guy now than he was. I had him I had him at um, Harley Davidson. I have a picture. Too bad I didn't send it to you with Ivanka when she was a child. But, you know, Mr. Trump asked me, he says, could you please bring me your security? I said, sure. And out of the guys, and you know, we had John McCarthy. We had Randy. We had Robert. We had, you know, a lot of guys. Matthew. Well, the only two George, he chose, and all the, and a lot of minorities, right? But the only two he chose to talk to were Matt Dwyer and Matt Grace. And Matt, Matt Grace Dwyer, is a doctor. At, Matt Dwyer ended up uh, working for him, oh. and being being pursued by Andrea Mitchell to try and dish dirt on Mr. Trump. And I told him, Matthew, listen, this really? is when he run, when he was running for president. I said, listen, Matthew, you're going to get married. You're going to have a kid. Don't get involved. If you say something, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. So stay out of it. Oh, yeah, they were pestering him. Matt Matt worked with them. And, you know, but Mr. Trump had a certain type he wanted. Let's put it that way. 
Okay. But he wasn't he wasn't racist at all because you you see how he was with a number of African Americans and I like Mr. Trump. Now I still like him a lot, but he has a tendency to still live in the past with the alleged election fraud. I'm not saying it was or it wasn't. And he still can't get out of uh, putting his foot in his mouth. But that being said, our country was never better when he ran it. And the fool that's there now is destroying this country more and more every day. I mean, look at the balloon situation. That, that's all I'll say about that. You know, I don't want to talk politics. Either. I agree. Now, what, what was it about M Matt Grace and Dwyer that Donald Trump saw that he picked them out of the chorus. What do you think it was? What well, were their personalities? You'd have, to, you'd have to ask him, but I believe it was because they were tall and uh, white. Were they similar looking. personality, Matt and and Dwyer? Um, Why? Matt, that was quiet. They, Matt was quiet. Well, they were both a little quiet. Matt Dwyer was just a hard worker, and he do what you said. And Matthew had Grace had more of an opinion. And he was a very intelligent guy. And yes. he was a gold glove boxer. He went to yes, the finals. Yes, he was a brilliant boxer. You know, and um, so that's one thing I'm proud of. The majority of my guys have done very well for themselves. And I'd like to think that I had a little something to do with that, you know. And um, I'm, I'm proud of all of them. I mean, hey, remember Mike Murphy? He was the security guy for the Giants yeah. up until when they brought in um, – the coach now, Brian Dable. I think I was the bad one when I was in your crew with Shout. I got I you had to release me because I put someone's head through the metal doors, remember? And the lawyer called you the next day. Yeah, and I said Vinnie well, Bella was there with me. <laughs> and we had to say, well, Vincent doesn't work here anymore, but he didn't do that. The the alleged the alleged victim fell. You know, he, <laughs> he tripped over his own feet. Yeah, no, I was I was a little wild back then. I've calmed down like you though. I, you know, but no, nah, you were Vinny, you Compared to some of those guys, like you were mild. You, I thought were, I was okay. Yeah, you know, this you guy very, was nice very good with the customers. Very what? good with the customers. Very affable. Very friendly. Very likable. I, I tried to and, be. But you were very loyal. That's one of your great traits. You're a very loyal guy. Yeah, it's interesting because there were problems on YouTube and people didn't think I was loyal. And I said, you should see me in the street if I'm loyal. Yeah, here's one well, that could tell you and knows me 40 years. <laughs> yeah, they, just, they don't know you. They just see you on this show and they have yeah. no idea the person you are. And you know what? They they shouldn't pass judgment on any. Nobody should on anybody. Honestly. I appreciate it. That's all right. I'm telling you the truth. I appreciate it. So now that you're in Florida, the club scene is different. We covered that. I was in Florida a couple of times last year before I was ill. And you walk around, I won't say the C word. Back then, in the, remember back in the day, the C word was something else to us. Now it's something. Um, you you walk around Florida, and it was like it was never there. And this was like a year and a half ago. You could walk. Now, the couple of stores that made you wear masks was Dick's, because it's Dick's Sporting. It's out of New York. And Starbucks, because it's out of Seattle. And then well, we, never, they, they, we never, wore, we barely wore masks. I think in Dick's, you had to. In Dick's Sporting Goods, when I went there, you had to. Well, Starbucks, I mean, because it's from Seattle, you know, they're, they're pushing an arrow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's another story altogether. Yeah. You know, but, but, but no, you, we were, we were very, um, not lax. The governor made it. Yeah. We had to wear masks when we went into publics or when we were going into certain places. But for the most part, when you were outdoors, you know, when I see people now driving with a mask in an air conditioned car or they're outside, I just say to myself, Oh my God! God bless you. Or like they like they say it in Texas, bless their hearts. You know. Well, if I see you driving with a mask now in the car, unless someone stole your car during the night, what are you wearing it for? I, that's You're exactly the only right. one there. <laughs> hey, Vinny. You know, but you know, there's a lot. You know what it is? There's a lot of people down here that, uh, especially the elderly, still feel they need to wear them. But hey, God bless them. That's their choice. Absolutely. Yeah. If, if Yeah. I'm not going to make fun of it. And now, as far as clubs go, they're down here to show you how old it's gotten. Like the biggest thing we do, and we used to do it every other week was we would do go do karaoke about a dozen or 18 of us. It was a lot of fun. And you, you know, you know better than anybody what that's all about. Yeah. And, and they just yeah. now opened a three story Chinese restaurant. They have no good Chinese down here. And it's called Blackbird. It's owned by a restaurant group and they have a club in the restaurant, which m there are not real clubs down here. There are restaurants, oh, there really? are 
cigar bars, but I mean where we are, you know, d- right. down in Boca and 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 Delray, there are still cl- clubs, but it's not the same, Vinny. It's so not the same. Not in New York, not in Florida. Yeah, everything's it's just changed. different. Everything's changed. Um, now, do you see a difference now? Now you've been back to New York. Have you been back? You haven't been back to New York in the last couple. Of no, years. no. I've had Tina and I. Even though Nicholas wanted to go back, I'm he sure did. we'll go back at some time. But I have no desire. We don't. Tina misses the seasons, and she misses, you know, the shopping and Rockefeller Center and you know right, typical right. stuff. I don't miss it. You know, like I said, I, I did my time there. I, and, you know, I, I hated when de Blasio was the mayor. I couldn't stand Cuomo. I can't stand Hockle. And I, I, I lived through these, um, I don't want to call them gentlemen, but these people coming to our country and being stoned like zombies and just being a big problem. And uh, I, I don't need it. You see it so bad now that they're using taxpayer money in New York to send them to Canada. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty scary, actually. So you know, I mean, I don't. We don't need that. I'm. We're in a safe environment. Of course, things can happen no matter where you are. But like I said, uh, I wish everybody could see where we live and the community and like that. And I, I, I think you're in Port everybody. Lucy. You're in yes. Port Lucy. See, I'd like to come down when when spring training starts, maybe in three weeks. This well, way, spring hang with training you. starts in earnest next. Wednesday, the open tryouts. Pitchers and catchers? Uh, yeah, from the 15th, and the games start the 25th. And the World Baseball Classic, which if you come then, you might see George, because I know he's working with it. Oh, and really? You might, you might, you know, Omar's with the Yankees now. I know, I know. And Beltron's with the Mets. Go figure. Yeah, well, Beltron was a horrible announcer. You could, the guy, God bless him, nice guy, great baseball guy, very knowledgeable, but he couldn't, he couldn't speak well, and he was unable to like Kay and Cone and Flaherty had to carry him and coax him. So he'll be better off being an assistant assistant to uh, Billy Epler and he'll, he'll be good at that. He'll eventually take over. I think for Epler when Sandy retires, Epler will go to that spot, right? I don't think so. They were looking at a guy from the Brewers. I forgot his name. I think so. I think that was his name. Stearns. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. But he worked for the Mets like 15 years ago. It, yeah, it could be Epler. Epler's a great guy. He's very mm-hmm. fan friendly and he's made some great moves. If you look at the non roster players he's bringing in for the Mets uh, and the work that he and Cone have done, you know, I, I for one was a little, I felt it was so hypocritical of people to always criticize the Yankees and their money spending. And then here goes Steve Cohen, God bless him, spending that money on Correa, which didn't work out. But he wants an all-star at every position. But he wants the best team in New York, and he wants the best team in the league, and he's trying to do that. I, I just hope that the Mets can avoid their typical injury bugaboo. You know, you got two guys who are older starters. I think DeGrom is full of crap. I think he didn't want to pay the taxes, and he wanted to – he says, oh, one day I'll tell you, Buck. I'll tell you what it's all about. It's about that Texas gave him more money. He really didn't like New York. He got tired of the press hounding him, but he never he didn't pitch enough, and he, he – Took the best deal he could. Very happy about Jeff McNeil. Love his wife, Tatiana, and their dog, Willow. He's a great guy. He's a great guy, and he deserves it. The guy labored in the minors and worked his way up. But, um, yeah, Vinny, you and I love baseball, so we could talk three hours on this. Just to to show you, I have a a dear friend in here, Teresa Murphy, that I've socialized with, Chuck Murphy. the The son is Ryan Murphy. I think number seven in the Giants pitching. Prospect, and he um, he has been invited to spring training with the big club. That's great. So congratulations to Ryan. I have an interview with Ryan. If you go back to my channel early on, interview with Ryan Murphy. Go read about him. He's tremendous. And what a kid! I met him. He's a, a tremendous. The family is tremendous. But well, one uh, thing, one thing I like, Vinny, is I get to work the A games of the St. Lucie Mets. So. I get to talk to the players. They're kids. Some of them don't even speak English well. And now I'm going to see a couple of the guys like Alex Ramirez and um, Brent Hartwig that were in camp that I was pitching for the A-team last year. Uh, and uh, Carlos Alvarez. Um, you so think I'll he's a real deal, Carlos Alvarez? 
I don't know yet, but I'll tell you a guy who I hope is the real deal. And I, this is a great story. Oh, Francisco. I think I'm talking about Francisco Alvarez, the Met catcher. Yeah, but now the Yankees have a guy, Jason Dominguez. He'll be in camp this year. And I met him when he played last year. And he's he's the ball of wax. I mean, they gave him a ton of money, and they're really counting on him. They call him the Martian, right? So he's sitting at the end of the dugout, and I'm talking to him. And I see him. And I let I say, some kids will come. Will you sign the balls? He said, sure. When he would sign the ball, he would ask the kid – to take another ball and have them sign the ball and take it back. And he sat there for 30 or 40 minutes. Now that's a guy you want to see succeed because he's, sure. he's, he's good to the kids and he loves the game. Whereas there's another guy and I forgot his name because I didn't like him. He was a first round draft choice of the Marlins. He was in the a, a ball last year and he, he signed three balls. He go, that's it. That's it. I'm done. I said, brother, you don't know how lucky you are because you may not even be in AAA one day. So while you're here, enjoy it and be nice to the fans and the kids. Yeah, I'll uh, tell you a story. You there was something up here about uh, DeGrom not liking the doctors. Uh, I will tell you that my friend is a radiologist at Columbia Presbyterian. She saw DeGrom having a, a, a not a heated argument with David Alchek. And she told me that DeGrom did not like the medical staff. Now, I don't know if that was enough. Now, my friend owns a club, Jeff, in Manhattan where Syndergaard used to hang out and actually party while he was at the Mets. And he's he kind said, of energy. Yeah, he said that Jacob couldn't stand New York. That's what Syndergaard well, said. Well, that's what I told you. I said couldn't that stand. He, he can say anything he wants, but he doesn't like the grind. He doesn't like the hustle bustle. He doesn't like the pressure of having 20 reporters. And he went to Texas where it's tax free and they gave him more money. And, you know, but God bless him. I mean, he, like I said, I was very disappointed, but uh, Cohen turned around and fortified his staff, got himself a nice staff when Carrasco is your number five, if he makes it through the season, yes. that's not, not bad at all. You know, I think some of it's politics, Jeff. I know for a fact, because I know someone that works for the Mets, I'll, off, I'll tell you. He said that Marcus Stroman was not offered a contract because he was putting BLM sh sh stuff all over. No, the yeah, Stroman. and he wasn't that they didn't want the the radical. They, they didn't want it. No, no, um, Stro. I'll just say like this: Stro's tough to deal with at times. Very um, high, strong, uh, friendly, loves the game, but there are other elements that prevent him from reaching the pinnacle of success that he could. But that's personal stuff that he's got to deal with. Yeah. And, and listen, he's a smart, very, very intelligent young guy. I was told. Absolutely. Very intelligent. Absolutely. But you know, you, you can't force your politics on people. I heard that about Tebow too, that, that when he was with the Jets, he's leaving all uh, uh, religious pamphlets on the benches. And they said, but Tim, don't do it. He never did it again. He apologized to everybody and they yeah. were fine with him. They were fine when with he Tebow. Vinny, you're going to open up another can of worms because I said he was a good guy. I, I like Tebow. He was, the, except for Brandon Nimmo, he was the most approachable Met when he was in spring training. And really? he was great with everybody. But you have to remember one thing. Why did we criticize Tebow kneeling in prayer at a time when the country needed it? But we, we, we heralded and loved uh, Kaepernick doing it. It wasn't okay for Tebow. It was okay for Colin. I'll never understand that. I agree. And and you know what? That's just, you can't force your morality on people. No. They're not no. wrong. They're different. No. They're not wrong. But nope. uh, so now you look at baseball, and it's changed a lot. The money is ridiculous. Uh, oh, crazy! You can have Otani make five hundred million dollar contract next year. You think the Mets I, get Otani? Cohen wants him. Now, whether he can do it or not, he doesn't care about the luxury tax. So it depends if Otani wants it. And he's pissed he didn't win the MVP. And he would thrive in New York. I think he'd be great. But that remains to be seen. I don't know about that, you know. But so it's a different stories you were going to tell me. Well, look at, again, you brought up a good point. Look at the new rules. They're not going to be in the, I don't think they're going to be in the major leagues this year. But the, the pitch, yeah, they are. The pitch clock. Um, oh, that's going to affect, affect these guys stepping in and out of the box. And base uh, dealers, it's going to base dealers once they larger throw larger bases. Them. There's going to be larger bases. You yes. know, there's a lot of things that. Listen, man, there's nothing like the old days of the '86 Mets and baseball, and you know we're old school. That's all I can say about. I that. am.
And I've tried to adjust. My son's 27. I've tried to adjust. And, you know, but when you're old, there is a statement that your dad told me. I had heard it from my dad. Uh, I worked for Jeff's dad at Green Luggage before I went to the Equitable. And he said, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I don't care how much you try. Yeah, uh, well, that's an old one. And it's, it's still applicable and today. He was right. He was Still right. Clickable today, yeah. So you sent me some great pictures, and I want to put them up here. I, I I didn't have them downloaded where I could show them on the screen, but I'm certainly going to show them because they're very worthy of showing. Um, just as handsome in your new picture as ever. Here is – tell me a story about this gentleman. Well, that's Freeman McNeil, just one of the nicest, most affable, fan-friendly guys, a gentleman, and loved the where game. Where did you meet him? Well, when we when we did a lot of the charity events, he was one of the guys I met. I I, I love Freeman. I think he was one of the best running backs in Jets history. Oh, Sean Landetta. Sean Landetta, if there's a party, he'll be there. Doesn't matter <laughs> where it is, what club it is. He'll promote stuff. He's a real character, but a, a fun guy and probably one of the best punters in the NFL in the uh, in the 80s and 90s. Oh, I can't see that one. Oh, Wesley Walker. Uh, Wesley Walker, God bless him. He has His body is a wreck. He still is in Deer Park, Long Island. He still uh, works with kids. He still works with the school system. But that poor guy took so many hits. You talk about these guys today with CTE. Thank God I don't think Wes has it. His body is so arthritic and beat up and definitely one of the best receivers the Jets ever had. And um, one of the stories I was going to tell you is back in those days, I knew – a bunch of the jets when I lived in garden city. And right. one day, one day my cats were missing and I had uh, Daryl Ray, Jerome Barkham, Donald Dykes, Marion Barber. And we used to hang out a little bit, watch Monday night football. And they see me outside. I'm looking for my cats. Now imagine these four guys in their jet shorts, all big dudes, man, right. on hands and knees, helping me look for my cats in the brush. <laughs> you know, they, and and by the way, that brings up a story of what I was talking about, which is relevant today. But to tell you how it was back then, when I was trying to sell my my condo, we were in there on a Monday night watching football at a sunken living room and watching the game. And I had told the realtor, "Do not come without letting me know." Well, here we're watching Monday night football. The doorbell rings, and here's this. I won't even. I can't use certain words, but this unattractive, annoying pushy real estate agent with this nice Italian couple. I says, what'd I tell you? I said, I got company. She sticks her head in. She looks at my guys. The next day, the office was calling me, telling me, I don't think we're going to be able to help you anymore because you're involved with drug dealing. I said, what? They what? said, yeah, we, we were told that you had four African-Americans in your, in your room drinking beer. I said, are you kidding me? These guys made more money than the whole agency was worth and that's why i'm saying more complex yeah that, that's what i'm saying that people you know assume and pass judgment without knowing the story absolutely now tell us a little i know you were very close to walt clyde frazier oh you're changing sports now yeah clyde and i um clyde took me to camp when i was uh 16 we went to camp I can't remember the name of it. It was in Pauling, New York. And I knew Walt very well. I knew him when he lived on 54th Street with his uh, mirror on the ceiling and this thing with the, the Clyde inscripted. But that's too long a story because I have so many stories about him. But he's one. Of, let me tell you something. Walt, when he left basketball, people don't know this. He worked for a courier agency because they didn't make a lot of money back then. And in order, he didn't have confidence in himself. So he read, 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 and read everything he could right. to make his vocabulary exemplary. And that's why you always hear him, you know, rhyming. And he became one of the uh, few people to be inducted into the Hall of Fame for both playing and for broadcasting. I, I love Clyde. I mean, his, his birthday's coming up next month. And he's one of the, <laughs> that's one of the nicest guys I've ever known. I knew all those guys on that uh, 69, 70 and 72, 73 team very, very well. That, that you'll have to do a whole nother show with that because. Now, uh, go, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Now, 
you have to watch the first interview I did with Jeff last year. And in a couple of minutes, we're going to get to the Super Bowl preview. He's a very knowledgeable. If you want to, I, I don't promote sports betting on here. Life, and, I don't know if I told you, I'm in life and coach school to be a professional life coach and health coach. You should be. You should be. You'd be very good at that. Thank you. You're, I very, you're very comforting. You are a good listener. You give good advice. God bless you. You'll be very good at it. Thank I you. I suggest anybody who needs a life coach, see the Brooklyn guy. <laughs> oh. Now, I have two stories that you have to say. Uh, tell people. Sure. One is the Frank Sinatra story. Oh, well, that, that's a quick one. I mean, my dad was friends with Jilly Rizzo, and Jilly had his place on 52nd Street. So we were down at the Fountain Blue, I was a kid. I, I couldn't have been more than 10, maybe. And Frank was always palling it up with his guys in the boom, boom room. And I, I told my dad, I said, man, I'd, I'd love to meet him. So he happened to be up in his room and Jilly said, okay, come on, you, you can go see the old man now. So we go upstairs and he's laying, sitting in a chair, just like the Don, with you know, and and he's sitting there with it with his with his little chain and you know the Frank Frank Sinatra. I mean, oh my God! And he says he gives me the like, come here, kid. And I walk up to him, and at that time I had my hair long in the back. I had like a mm -hmm. beetle haircut. Yeah. He grabs the back of my hair, and he says, "Hey, kid, good looking kid. You want to do me a favor? Cut your hair." I says, "Yes, yes, sir, Mister Sinatra." And uh, that was a quick one. I was blessed to meet him. I mean, he's to this day. Those are my karaoke go-tos. You know, I love yeah. Sinatra. I love Sinatra. Right. I saw him so many times. When I saw him at the Garden, where his comeback concert. I saw him at Carnegie Hall. I oh my God, that yeah, I'm, there'll never be another like him. He was the guy who would enunciate lyrics, and before the song, he would tell you who wrote it and who set it up, and here's the orchestra. Nobody, there'll never be another one like him. And Willie Mays's daughter, who lived with your family. Yeah, yeah. Well. Billy, unfortunately, passed too young. And Michael, if you saw the stuff with Willie Mays, his son, his adopted son, was there. But he's had a lot of problems in life, man. Don't ever think it's easy to be a celebrity's kid. But Billy lived with us. She was dating Clyde. So that's how another reason I knew Clyde really well, because she lived with us. And um, one day we drove down to Philly, to the old veteran stadium. And Billy took me on the field. And I had my glove, and Michael was there. And we started playing catch with uh, Dick Dietz, Baseball fans will remember these guys. Uh, Willie McCovey, uh, Mike McCormick, and Tito Fuentes. Oh, I mean, so yeah, that and Vinny, I think you, I don't know if you went with us and played at Shea when Shea was around. You know, that was that was great too. But that, no, that, we were that, playing that, up in Goshen with Al Pacino. Yeah, yeah. Goshen, and yeah, I found but, I found the picture of that. Oh, you guys. Do, do you know when we started doing Goshen? Well, it wasn't, no, it's not Goshen. It's not Goshen. It was Piermont, um, Piermont, New York. Piermont, Piermont. That's it. 1986, April. That's right. That's right. That's when that, we those, did it. Those were good times, man. Uh, those I love good times. Man. Yeah. It and was then, cool. and th now, the, the, the real, the best story of my life is the Ali story, but I think I told that in your first interview. Well, so. Say it again. Tell me again. Well, real quick. Um, again, thanks to Billy, they wanted me to have something special on my 18th birthday. So we went to PJ Clark's, the original one, Good not play. before it franchised on 50th. Great hamburgers. 50th, 50th, yeah, the Cadillac, 55th and 3rd. And we're sitting at the, the celebrity table. When you walked into the back room, there was a table as soon as you walked in against the wall. So nobody could see that the people sitting there when they came in. So anyway, okay. we're sitting there, my parents, Billy, and me. And all of a sudden, I feel a hand just go to my shoulder. And, and hit me pretty good and says, son, I heard you've been giving somebody a hard time. Step outside. So I got something to say to you. Now, Vinny, you know me almost 40 years. I never shut up, as your fans will see now. I look up at it, and it's, and it's Ali. My, my, I couldn't talk. So he sits down. He says to me, what's the matter, boy? What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Got nothing to say? And I, Vinny, I, I, I was like in a coma. I was like, like I, God forbid, I had a stroke. So finally, I got myself together. I said, champ, let me tell you something. It's been a long time since I put my words into rhythm and rhyme, but it was Bonavena who started it all by getting out of line. He must be crazy. 
he must be crazy or maybe a fool to have the ref wave the three knockdown rule. When the fight is over, the ref will jump and shout, that's all, folks, this turkey is out. So oh. Ali did that face. Ali did that face like, and, and, <laughs> yeah, and he says, he goes, how, how white boy know my poetry? How you know that, son? I said, champ, I got another one for you. The crowd is crazy. The crowd is frantic. They just spotted a satellite over the Atlantic. Whoever thought when they came to this fight, they see the launching of a black satellite. That was Joe Frazier. You know? <laughs> and, 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 oh, I forgot to tell you. So What's when that? I couldn't talk, when I couldn't talk, he puts his fist out like this. He goes, touch it. Touch it, son. This is the fist that rocked the world. Knocked out Joe Frazier. Knocked out Sonny Liston. Ain't no man want a part of this. Touch it, son. And that was, and then this is even better. When we went up to the Park Lane Hotel another time, um, I went up to the room with him, didn't know where I was going. And we walked into a, a hotel room in the Park Lane on 58th Street, 59th Street, Central Park South. And there's Joe Lewis sitting at the end of the bed. And Champ took out stacks of money. And Joe was just sitting there watching cartoons. And he gave it to Joe Lewis's wife. I'll never forget that. Really? Yeah, that's a true story. Hand to God. No, I believe you. So speaking of football, we'll get back to football. I'm going to tell you what I think about this game. The Super Bowl. Sure. Uh, sure. I like Kansas City. I'll tell you why. The Chiefs played, I think, the ninth toughest schedule. The Eagles played the 29th easiest. Uh, Philly steps up in class. They beat the overrated. They beat the overrated Giants. I didn't think the Giants or anything. And the 49ers who had to use their fourth string quarterback after uh, Purdy couldn't even throw the ball. I think Hertz yards per attempt has been declining in his past four games. If you look, I think he's coming back to earth a bit. Um, it was like eight, six, five point five, three, eight, or something. Kansas City's offensive line is ranked number five in sack rate um, this season. Philly is number nineteen. I think the Chiefs will play up tempo. Uh, I think that negates the pass rush for the Eagles. Uh, I don't like to pass up Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes in two with two weeks to prepare. Uh, they're eighteen and six. One against the spread as underdog or as favorite of three points or less. The Chiefs have played 32 straight games. They either won outright or lost by four points or fewer. So I'm taking Kansas City. Well, Vinny, that's a very astute observation on your behalf. As usual, you have the facts straight. But now we're going to talk, uh, I'm not going to say reality, but okay, my, reality, heart, though. <laughs> my heart wants the Chiefs to win. I love Patrick Mahomes. I think he's one of the best of all time. Yeah. We still don't know about that injury. Now, he did throw for 326 yards, hobbled. But to give you an example, um, Clyde Edwards Hilaire had the same injury November 20th and is just coming back now and not 100%. I want Kansas City to win. You're right about their offensive line. I think that they know they have to protect Patrick. They did a great job last game. The one thing I'll say, I believe that if they protect him, because of their lack of running game, not that they're not good, but they're not dominant, you're going to see Patrick go deep. And the way they line up Kelsey in different positions and different sets is going to, it's not going to confuse Philly, but don't forget, this is um, their first Super Bowl, the coaching staff, not the players. I think that the only neck that will not, it's not a negative, Pacheco and McKinnon and Edwards Hilaire are not like, they're just not as good as runners as Sanders and, um, and uh, what's his name? Gainwell and Boston Scott. Um, Another thing, Vinny, everything you said is true, but you have to look at your who you have. Now, they don't have Coleman, McCole Coleman, who was a returner right. and did a lot of jet sweeps and is a good receiver. We don't know how JoJo Smith-Schuster, how badly he's hurt and we because his knee's been giving him a lot of trouble. And we don't know about Kadarius Toney, who could definitely be a big part of this game in so many ways. Yes, they have the top offense. They also have rookie defensive backs. That makes me nervous. Right. Yes, they, they've had they've had two weeks rest. I agree. You know, the white uniforms, which Kansas City will be wearing in the Super Bowl against any other color is 15 and three, which means nothing because that's just right. luck or, or it's the color of a uniform. Yeah, right. But Andy Reid Andy Reed is 3-0 and against Philadelphia. So now I told you about the Chiefs. Now let me tell you about the Eagles. Mm -hmm. Hurts, I don't think, is 100%. They're the number one rushing team for a reason. They have a fantastic offensive line, and they're going to run. They have great receivers in Brown and Smith and Goddard. Um, 
I already told you about the runners. The right. defensive right. line, Hassan Reddick changes the defense. You don't know where he's going to line up. And you don't just have to worry about Hassan Reddick. You have what's Sweat, you have Graham. And don't forget, they picked up Sue, Ndamukong and Sue, who I can't stand, and Linval, the ex-giant. Um, they had the top-ranked pass defense, but Kansas City has the top offense, so something's got to give. And I think they can be beat deep. They can also be run on at times. They were 24th against the run per yard attempt. So that's why it's important that these guys – do something. But, you know, Slay and Bradbury are good defenders, but the other guys, you could take them or leave them. So I think you can go deep. So my, my, I really want Kansas City to win. I just think from top to bottom, the Eagles have a better team in all departments, but you brought up a very good point. Two weeks preparation. Andy Reid is a master and, yeah. and Mahomes has had two more weeks to heal. So, you know, this is really a, a um, legacy game for Mahomes. Because if he, okay. if, he, if he wins, okay, he's got two Super Bowls now in shorter time than Brady. Right. But if he loses, they'll say, well, what's the excuse this time? So I think the big thing is how much will Tony be able to contribute, you know, because he's a, he's a dynamo. And they need P Isaiah Pacheco and Derek McKinnon and Clyde Edwards Hilaire to produce not only running, but a lot of checkdowns on the swing passes and the play action. So Vinny... I'm hoping Kansas City wins. But to be honest with you, and you know we're both we both gambled enough in our day. This is the game. I'm just gonna sit back and, and relax and, and enjoy the game. And, and enjoy and Vinny, enjoy a game of pickleball before it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know about you, but it's ironic. My son th thinks he's a handicapper and he's pretty good. Great his kid. problem is his problem is, Vinny, he'll bet a six leg parlay and hit five of them. And I'll tell him, Nick, pick one game, bet one game. You're never gonna the more you bet, the more you gotta lose. Uh, of, course, and, uh, of course. And another thing, Vinny, I laugh because you also, you don't tell people, you also worked with us when we did the um, the football handicapping right. business. And I remember how barren we started and the studio we had. And I look at these guys today now. In Canossi, I remember we started. That's right. But we, Kenny and I did the show. Kenny. But I, I see these guys now with the cursing and the yelling and, the, oh. and I'm like the screaming and the lies. I'm like, man, you know, Vinny, you and I, Oh, blessed. We both had a diverse life, done a lot of things, and been pretty successful, God. Thank yeah. God. I think people, yeah. when I tell them I played ball with Al Pacino, went out with Bobby Ojeda, I think half the time they think I'm full of shit. At least you can say it now that it was no, true. I, I can. Hey, and not only that, you were pretty friendly with a couple of the Cubs, if you remember. We always Ryan that Stanberg story. and Durham. I used to ask them for tickets, and That's Ryan right. Stanberg would you tell me, what, Bobby's not here? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, he yeah. Used to now, uh, I'm going to give you two props. And I think you'll be on board with these. Miles Sanders over 58 rushing yards. Over Sanders, 58? Yeah. Yeah, but I'll tell you why. He loses work to gain well in Scott, like you said. But he's the guy the Eagles are going to lean on in a close game. Uh, Absolutely. 100%. I think 15 carries. The Chiefs are not a great run defense. And I think it's, it's risen from about 55. But I think that uh, – he cleared that 12 of 19 games this year. We have in 74 and Hertz has been erratic. And if he is erratic, I think they're going to really lean on the ground game. Well, I think they're going to lean on the ground game regardless, because that's what got them where they are now. Right. But um, you have to wonder how much Hertz is will, you know, don't forget his last game of the season, he had two weeks rest. Yeah. If he runs and he runs successfully, they're a much better team. And you're also, you know, you're hyped up. You know, your adrenaline kicks in. The, the next day you might suffer. But, you know, you, you'd you be surprised what you could do at the Super Bowl where you wouldn't have done week 10. You know, yeah, I mean? yeah. adrenaline kicks in and all that. Yeah, my son's big with these props. I don't like them. Props, I like the props. props. You know, I don't, I don't like them. But, oh, real quickly. Yeah. Because it is, it is the Super Bowl. One of my favorite guys and probably the greatest defense, one of the greatest defenders of all time, Lawrence Taylor. I had LT at the, a lot of the clubs I worked, and <laughs> he would always talk about himself in the third person, and he really? would tell you, yeah, I won't curse. So he started they and them before the woke did, pretty Sorry, much. What, say he again? started the they and them adjectives before the woke crowd did. He was yeah, yeah. He was, I remember LT telling me in no uncertain terms. You ain't never going to see an MF like LT again. LT is the greatest MF linebacker the world has ever seen. Right. And he, I mean, he was probably right, but better than that, when I was doing Har um, Jekyll and Hyde, he comes in, he goes, do me a favor, man. I don't want to be bothered. I want to sit at the bar and relax. I said, okay. So I got two of my guys to stay by the bar. 
I said, don't let anybody bother unless he instructs you differently. So I'm outside about 45 minutes. An hour goes by checking. Here comes LT, a blonde on each arm, turns around with the big cowboy hat and the fur coat and gives me a big wink. Really? I'll oh, give yeah. you, I'll give you a quick story. Now we have Charlie Murphy in the chat, which is Ryan's father. Do you have a few minutes to hang out, Jeff? Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. Okay, I'm retired, I'm, man. Maybe he could talk about his son a I'm going to drop the link, Charlie, if you're available. Um, Johnny Bench, you know Robert Aronowitz very well. Robert Aronowitz, right, right. he owned Casino World. He's, he got yeah. to Vegas together. Well, Robert told me a story. Robert knows Bo Jackson very well. Bo Jackson, Bo Jackson. on the phone, and he, he wanted Jordan to appear at a tournament. And Jordan's saying, oh, I don't know if I can. He goes, get your ass here. Evidently, Bo Jackson has a lot of juice because Michael Jordan said, okay. But another thing, they had a golf tournament. Robert's in the hotel room. He gets into the elevator. Johnny Bench is there. There's three kids asking for autographs. He goes, what are you on, an autograph store? He wouldn't give them the autographs on the balls. Four hours later on the golf course, the same kids, hey, kids, how you doing? He signs. Yeah, he said, he's he the biggest prick, Johnny yep. Bench. You got it right. Listen, back in the day in 73 when I was 18, I helped a guy. I was a runner, and I did the Willis Reed show, the Johnny Bench show, and the Joe Namath show. You don't know that. But no, I didn't. Yeah, so I would, like, like they'd have somebody like, I forgot her name. There's so the link, I'd, Chuck. Okay, go ahead. And, and I'd watch her kid. But, yeah, I knew that about Johnny. But you don't like to talk bad about somebody, but not a great guy, not a nice guy. You he know? spit on me. Him and Pedro Babon were in the team bus, and me and my friends went to the Statler Hilton. We were trying to get autographs. They looked out the window. They spit on me. You sure that's all you did, Vinny? Yeah, and I got to tell you another <laughs> thing. John Franco, my friend John, John Franco in the All-Star game early on, 83 or 80, asked Johnny Bench for an autograph. Johnny Bench wouldn't give it to him. Johnny in 89, Johnny Bench asked him, and he took the ball and threw it in the bucket of water. Well, well Johnny didn't take any crap. He was a Brooklyn guy. Johnny no, Bush. he was a great guy. He's a Brooklyn guy like you. But um, if you remember, uh, when Randy Myers was around, my pal, my pal, he came to the club with a bunch of the Reds. It ended up on the front page in the Kentucky and Cincinnati paper because they were all taking beers from the front bar, and they came and got me. And the guys that were the, the worst um, – Guys were Tom Browning, Norm Charlton, and Rob Dibble, all big guys. Yeah. So I went, I went up there, and I was having words with them. And Randy came up with two beers in his hand. You remember Randy. He was a nut. Yeah. And he says, this is my guy. Why are you messing with him? We ended up throwing them out. And the next day, I got a real quick, I got a phone call. The guy goes, this is Bill Burgish. I said, and I hung up because I thought it was a lie. Calls back. This is Bill Burgish, Cincinnati Reds general manager. Pete Rose would like to speak to you hung up again. So the third time I didn't hang up and it was, and he says to me, do you mean all my team was in there intoxicated, inebriated, unruly? I said, nah, your, your, your position players were great, especially Bell and Francona. They were gems, but your pitching staff is a bunch of assholes. And Francona is a nice guy. I've had some great guy. Good guy. I love, I love Tito. Love yeah, him. He's really good guy. Um, here we go. This is Ryan Murphy's father, Chuck, a friend of mine. Chuck, meet Jeff Green, a dear friend of mine. Hey, Chuck, how you doing? Chuck, you, you got audio there? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Chuck's on mute. You know, if his son, I'll look him up later, but you know who's the biggest Giant fan in the world is Mad Dog Russo. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he, Ryan's he should, a terrific kid. He he should try and get his name to Mad Dog, you know. Yeah, I actually publicity. should. You hear me, Chuck? He can't hear me. I wonder what's wrong. I don't know, Vinny. It's oh, technology, right. you know. Yeah, I know. But uh until he gets it going. Um yeah, Johnny Franco used to come. You know who Johnny Franco is pretty close to Jeff? Dan Billardello, the catcher. Oh, yeah, he, the catcher. He come yeah. into pastels. Yeah. He'd come into Pastels yeah. in the mid-80s. Oh, God, yeah. Pastels. I know Cosmo from Pastels. Yeah, Pastel. I knew the owner, Ali Shades. And well, Cosmo was the guy who made that place go. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You ask anybody about Pastels and Cosmo, believe me. Believe me. Let me that see if came back in. Chuck, can you hear me? great place. Chuck? He, I can't hear him. 
But um, Odell had a nice career being a backup catcher, and you know. Yeah. So Not tell me what you, quickly, what are you thinking of Mets this year? Are they a hundred and one win team, or was that an aberration last no, year? No, no, they're definitely a hundred win team. I mean, if you go around the diamond and look at the players, you Thank have a couple you. of question marks. You know, who's the catcher going to be? Did they bring in Narva Narvaez to be the number one? They say he's there to really help Nito and Alvarez, but. They got him from the Brewers. I'm sure he's not there to get 100 at bats for the season. You know, you got your regular guys. You got Lindor and McNeil, and I'm glad they settled their differences. And um, Alonzo. And uh, what do you I'd think like Alonzo to... gets? Eight years, 200 million? Does that sound about right? Extension? I I couldn't answer that. I'm not. I have no idea. I would say he's going to get more than that. He's still young. And, you know, guys are getting paid. Listen, you're going to have Otani getting $500 million. He's in a different ballpark, of course, because the guy won 15 enough. games, had a great ERA, and, and, and hit like a demon. But it's a different world now. So I really would you don't rather know. have like Soto? Would you rather have Jeff either? I, the Mets either get Soto or, or Otani. I, they're going to get one of them. I, I don't know about that, but I'm sure there's no doubt in my mind they'd go for Otani. Soto could be a problem child sometimes, as can. That's why that Padre team, people think they're going to, you know, challenge in the division, and they might. But you got Soto, you got what's it? You got the kid who, um, Tatis. Oh boy. Yeah, Tatis Jr. has already had three strikes. You're out. The motorcycle and the That's drug scary. suspension. And then you got the other guy in the outfield. So, uh, not in the outfield. Gosh darn it. The one who took. Oh, Machado, you know, Machado. I, he, I think that forget he, Machado, I could see them getting him. Well, yeah. Chuck, especially you the, with, can you hear, I don't know. Can you hear me? You yeah. got me now? Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. Now Chuck, meet Jeff Green, one of my dearest and oldest friends. Jeff Green. Hey, Chuck. Nice to meet How you. you Same I had here. a little te technical, me. technical difficulties here, but uh, that, that's I, all right. I think we're okay now. Chuck, yeah. Chuck, heard, you lower your volume your just son. a little, Chuck? Uh, I'll try. I'm on the headphone. It started going right to my headphones. I still um, hear you. I hear you, even though it's the headphones. Just bear I with me here. Uh, now? Oh, Vinny. That's better. Yeah, I hear you. That's better. So, Chuck, tell us a little bit about Ryan Murphy. Tell Jeff about Ryan Murphy, first of all, and what where, what's happening now. All right. Well, as we speak... He is uh, has finished up his January um, uh, extended spring training in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and he is going to. Well, as everybody starts coming in now, he's going to be in a mini. He's staying there so he can work out at the complex um, because he's living there now with his girlfriend. Uh, he's got an apartment there, and he um, he'll be staying there for. Till the 15th and that's when it really starts ramping up because the Super Bowl's there the Super Bowl's in uh, in the Phoenix Scottsdale Arizona area so they had to all clear out all the people that didn't have a permanent place they had to clean out so he has been he has been doing very well he had just I, I, you know like a couple of days ago he got this uh, you know a meeting with him and they were saying that he was going to go to the spring training with the he's going to he's going to be with the with with the double a Richmond team uh, minor league spring training. But he's got like um, he doesn't have a full invite to the major league camp, but he's been told that they want to they want to pitch him. They, don't, they want him to get some some work in against the major leaguers. So. That's that's where he is right now. He was talking to his friend Jojo, Jojo Gray for the Washington Nationals, and he says it's a good thing, man. And they they, they, they a bad thing is certainly yeah. a bad thing. They got eyes on you. They got eyes on you. You're 23 years old, uh, you know, and they want to they want to throw you in there a little bit gently because they you know they go you're you're not going to start. You're going to be coming into games or. or you know, uh, when we want to put you in kind of concept, you know, and he's going to be, he should be starting for double A Richmond this year. Do, do they, Jeff, do they play the Mets at all? In no. No, no, we're single A. We're single A. Um, double A for the Mets is in Syracuse. Okay. Well, no, triple A is in, triple A is in for the Mets. 
Is no, Syracuse. Double A. Oh, wait a minute. Where's double A then? Oh, wait. A ball. Well, we're low A ball. And then A ball is in the Brooklyn Cyclones. So you have double Binghamton. Well, Binghamton. Bing, Binghamton is uh, is double A. Binghamton's double A. Syracuse triple A. That's what it is. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Okay. He must be really he, excited. He is? Oh, yeah. You know, Vinny, are you breaking up or is that me? No, you're too loud. Can you lower it? I mean, I don't know what's going on. Am I, let me see here. Let me lower it on the phone part here. Does yeah. that do anything? Uh, Vinny, I'm going to get a water. I'll be right back. Okay, go ahead. Does that lower it for now or yeah. can you hear me at all? Uh, I, I need it lower because it's feeding back. Oh, wow, really? Okay. I'll keep working on it. Okay. You, so Jeff, Jeff went to get a water. And, and you see that the, if, you if, look can... at Jeff, if you look at over Jeff's chair, the background, that's the where he lives. That's not a – look how beautiful that is. That's not a back uh, – a screen saver. That, that is Jeff's backyard. Beautiful. Get headphones guy. off, man. Mr. Wall, thank you so much for your compliment. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Jeff is very talented uh, and informative. Jeff, when Omar <laughs> yep. Manaya worked at the jukebox with Jeff, I met him a couple of times. What is it, before he went to Texas? I don't know what the deal is with him. Yeah. Omar was... Turn this back up. Wait, well, believe it or not, and they you just... You can't hear me at all now, right? Omar, when I met him... We played ball together back in the late seventies and early eighties. But Omar worked You're at still... Bloomingdale's, and he got the job. Is that better? Um, with yeah. the Texas Rangers through Sandy Johnson, who was a good friend and mentor. And um, yeah. yeah, and then he was lucky enough to, you know, he had that the, the Montreal team before they became the uh, the uh, what it was called the Nationals. Omar was always good. Omar's a great talent evaluator. He knows the game. He's smart, savvy. Yeah, I think so. Good guy. I think so. Chuck, you have two things going in the background. You have YouTube and screen. Uh, that's what it is. You got to shut off one of them. So, um, yeah. So you think the Mets are a hundred one team legitimately, Jeff? Yeah, absolutely. I think they are, and I think that their pitching staff will hold up, especially when they. You know, they put Quintana in there, and they have the great relievers, you know, um, especially Diaz had a great year. Uh, they're they're going to be good. They're going to be real good. I mean, that division is a very tough division. The Phillies are going to be tough again. They got Trey Turner. Trey Turner. The Braves are going to be tough. You know, there's, there's not the a lot of great team parts. in the division. On the Mets, if they play, you think they're better than Atlanta? I think barring injuries, the Mets should win the division. As long as they don't have another slack like last year where they couldn't win a, just a couple of games down the stretch to secure, you know, home field, I think they'll be fine. And the Yankees, what do you think about the Yankees? Same thing. I mean, I mean, again, it, you know, it depends if Severino stays healthy and they're starting pitching. They got Rodon and another guy. It's every team has the same problems. Everybody has to stay well, healthy. You lost them now. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think you're right. I don't think that um, – I think Philly is good. I don't know if Philly's as good as the Mets or Braves. I think I I put the Mets honestly at about ninety eight wins. Braves right there. Philly about ninety three. Well, the Phillies got Trey Turner. They're going to be just as good as last year, and they were good enough to get deep. You know what I mean? And I think you have to watch. Far people think I'm crazy. Miami. They have a great pitching staff. Miami is building something. Great I'm, pitching so, staff. I'm sad they I'm sad they got rid of Mattingly. But, you know, they, they're building something. Stottlemyre does a great job, Junior, with the pitching staff. And, you know, I think they'll be good, but I think they'll be very happy to be a, a 500 team this year. I don't think they're going to be – I think they're more of a spoiler team. Not this year. They're, they're going to be good, but they're not ready yet. Yeah. Chuck, what do you think? You're, Am I you're, there? Yeah, you're good now, Chuck. You sound good. Okay. Oh, very good. What do you think of the Mets, Chuck? Um, very competitive division. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be who stays healthy, you know? I, I mean, I, I, know, I honestly think that'll cross the board. Phillies, Braves, Mets, um, Marlins are going to be competitive. Uh, Nationals are not. Um, they, they, they play. It's interesting. Isn't this the year that they play everybody? Uh, they're starting to play every team in baseball now. Is, it, Jeff? Is this the year that they Is play this, everybody? Yeah. 
Is that yeah, the, it's, it's, I forgot what it's called. They have a, new, a name for the schedule, but I yeah. Uh, so so they're going to be playing. They still play the Yankees in the home and home kind of thing. Um, I know they're. I think they're playing Kansas City. I know they're playing Texas because Texas is coming. Right, and that's you know Texas is coming up with Degrom there, and Degrom amazing. And De, you know, and did you guys talk about Degrom? Did you talk about how he hated New York? How he, he didn't did uh, for a minute, and so did I. I say I my prediction: they skipped Degrom against the Mets. Well, they did yeah. with the, the Syndergaard didn't want to pitch against them last yeah, year. Yeah, no, I don't I think they want him booed. Like he'll get booed. He'll get the hell booed out of him. Yeah, he, it really boiled down to. I, I think I was Jeff. I heard because I, I was coming home from uh, uh, Eyeglass Place. I think you were talking about Degrom and how he didn't like the the, the uh, medical staff and he didn't like, he the, didn't like the medical staff. all the all the reporters around him all the time. I I think his wife and has a lot to do with it because his wife. He didn't want to raise his, the kids in New York. You know how I, I knew I, that he didn't want. You know how I knew he wasn't a gamer, Jeff. He had six, six starts in the minor leagues when he could have helped the Mets, and he was going five innings there. He did not want to get injured before this big payday. Yeah. Now you listen when he pitched down here in Single A. You need five starts when your team is a game up, and you need five starts that you couldn't give them four innings here. I think he was. I think he was dogging it. I don't think he wanted to risk his own. Well, listen. I almost agreed to get 150 million dollars. Not, but a lot of players would play through. Look at Kirk Gibson. Didn't mm -hmm. care. And I think the ground was soft. I'm being serious. And I think they were starting to think so. I think a lot of people in the organization. Listen, you could, you had to make an offer to him. But I think they thought he wasn't a gamer. He wasn't Max Scherzer. He wasn't Schilling. No, but they they made a, a fine offer. And no matter what they say, when they say it's not the money, it's always about the money. In this case, yeah, that was one thing. But he liked Texas. You don't have tax there. He's he can go on a ranch with horses and wear a cowboy hat and not have to deal with Manhattan. Sure. And, you know, I mean, he, he some guys just listen. He wasn't like um, Ed Whitson, but he just didn't like New York. I mean, I don't care what he says. He just didn't want to be here. Right. How do you and think and you know what? And, and, and for that reason, I, I don't really fault him. I don't really fault him. You know, it's like um, if you don't if you don't like where you are, then there's plenty of other places to go. Then go, then go. Right, somewhere. that's that's what free agency is all about. Yeah, I get you, it, have, but you finally had the chance. Degrom finally had the chance to decide because even with Ryan right now, you know, he this is a big year for him. Uh, the Rule Five draft, he'll be eligible because he, after this year's over, he'll be with the Giants for three years. And they have to protect him in the forty-man roster, or he becomes eligible to be picked yeah. up. By, you know. Do you think this is his biggest year, a make or break year? Well, Not a make well, or break. Well, I feel like maybe, I, but. I feel like it is right now. It wasn't so much up until last year, but the the little little back issue he had and the little forearm uh, tendonitis that he had set him back. And and they 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 were very careful with him, but he didn't put up numbers. So I, I've learned a lot of things along the way here. I've learned that when I yeah. first started listening to reporters, I listened to every word they said, and I believed it all. And right. then, and now, you know, Ryan had these little nagging little injuries, and he's not even hardly talked about anymore. And other guys have gone ahead of him in the rankings oh, really? and all because that. Because of the injuries? Because of yeah. the injuries? Yeah. And so your question, is this a big year for him? It's absolutely a big year for him. He's he was 23, told, right? Huh? He's 23. Yeah, he'll be and he'll be 23 through the whole season. He's not going to be 24 okay. till October. Okay. You know, so yeah. he's it's a whole year of being 23. Yeah. Um he he How tall uh, is, is he? he's 62. Um if you look at his uh, baseball card it says he's, I think he says it's 61190. But he's like he's 62 I'd say about 210 right now. So he's he's really beefed up. Well, Vinny's seen him. You you've oh, seen yeah. him. He's, he's a pretty. Yeah, he's in really really good shape. He's he tells me now uh, that he's been. It's his arm feels better than it's ever felt. Um, and and we tracked him back to his outing that when he first got brought up to uh, uh, Virginia, he pitched in Maryland, and he came from uh, Eugene, Oregon, which was about I don't know, it was about sixty something degrees, sixty five degrees. And then he went to Maryland. It was 97, feels like 104 the day that, and he flew across, across the country 
There he is. I remember that night. That's, oh, yeah. We went to see Glenn Tilbrook. You know how I like squeeze, Jeff. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Daryl's house. We went to Daryl's house. Yeah, actually, you Jeff, I meant to tell you, you, you mentioned Paulie, New York. That's what Daryl's house is. Daryl Hall yeah. from yeah. Hall & Oates' restaurant bar, yeah. and they have a stage. And that's where we went in Paulie, New York. Uh, a week oh, that's ago. funny. Probably like October 6th or something, because I yeah. had my ankle done the next week. And yeah. what a great place. And Chuck and Teresa. Teresa remembered I love Glenn Tobrook. And she bought the tickets for me, yeah. and they brought oh, me out nice. to dinner. Amazing family, not that was fun. that obviously, but that was fun. So, that was so a good night. Yeah, yeah, we had a great time. So this is a big year for Ryan. So it's a so it's a big year for him because like they've told him, they've sat him down and talked to him. Um, they looked at he's developed a new pitch this year. I don't know if I would have done another show talking about that a cutter. So he they're Wait, they're 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 shelfing. They're not going to use the changeup as much. They wanted him to use the cutter. Along with the slider and uh, and this and his fastball, I guess it, I guess the the metrics work out for him better that way. So so he was using that, and they they were telling him his his cutter already looks like major league ready, and That's he's got a pitches for fastball slider. I, he, he, they told him that if it, just stay healthy, Ryan, just stay healthy because if you stay healthy, you're going to move fast this year, meaning well, that. You could be in Double A for a little bit, go up to go up to Virginia, Sacramento. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, from Virginia to Sacramento, Triple A, and you you might get a who knows if the Giants stink, uh, you might get a spot start. Somebody gets hurt, you might that be put in there. So you know, so it's a huge year for him. Well, the uh, more pitches, the better. The more yeah. pitches, the better. But if he's a starter, yeah. when, and he has a good cutter, you want to try and focus on yeah. two or three pitches. Yep. As a starter, if he has six pitches, yeah, he's better off as a relief pitcher. But one thing I'll tell you, ball players and man, coaches and managers, they don't want to – I mean, it's not its not like they want to forget it, but they don't want to hear about injuries. Everybody plays through injuries. Everybody's yep, right. hurt. So yep. the less he talks about it – I mean, don't, don't go out and throw when your elbow's killing you. Great advice. The great point. less you talk great about point. it, the better you are. You know that's, what I mean? So that's, so that's exactly um, – Ryan didn't know – he he came off that that start where it was 107 degrees. His arm was a little fatigued, and he felt he. They asked. They always go through the exit meetings with him afterwards, and he said, "Yeah, my arm feels a little, you know, a little bit funny, you know, a little bit tired." He goes, "Oh, okay, you know, take a week off, throw a long toss, we'll do it again, and you'll pitch again on, and we'll see how it goes." And so he pitched the next outing in Double A. He pitched five innings, struck out five. Um, gave up no hits, but oh. walked five guys. So his control was a little off. And then they asked him after the game too. He says, yeah, it's, it's still feeling funky. Okay. We're going to send you for an MRI. And, from then on, and from then on, he went into protocol. Um, three doctors looked at it. The first doctor saw um, inflammation. The second you, one. You saw, see James Andrews, right? The renowned James Andrews was the third one. Cause they sent him to Arizona guy, Jeff. to have Andrews look at him. And he looked at his shoulder and elbow and everything and said, everything is fine. There's absolutely no structural damage. He's got a, he, he, it's just got a, he's, it's a little, not even tired arm. It's just strained a little bit. So what did they do? It's like getting a major operation. Now you're on six to eight weeks. So to Jeff, your point, what, how do you, what do you say? So he might've been able to work through that. He's never felt an in, anything before in his arm. So he didn't know for sure if he should say anything. But as right. he told me, once you enter protocol, the protocol drops you back down to ground zero. You don't touch a ball for two weeks. And then you start ramping up. You start throwing uh, on the uh, flat ground. Then you start. It's just like starting all over again. Yeah, you yeah. Start, 30 feet and 60 feet, you know. Yeah. And then it's an inning and then it's two innings. And then he came, then he came back and he pitched a little bit um, at the end of the year. He came up for a playoff game for Richmond, but they had lost the first two. He was supposed to pitch the third one, but they lost, so they were out of the, so they were out of his playoffs. So, t again, to your point, it's all a learning maturation process of what you say to somebody. Right. You know, is it something that you really should say something about, or should you just because he has never been one to re refuse the ball? To come out of a game, no way, man. If his arm's hanging off of him, he would no, stand on that. He, no, he, he knows his own body, and if he's hurting, he has to say something. But how many yep. innings did he end up throwing last year? 
Well, last year he didn't throw that many. Okay, what did he so throw? Like, Seventy. If he well, because he got shut. Well, because he had the back spasms at the beginning of the year. Um, he pitched, which is normal set, for a pitcher. That's yeah. Normal. He had six. I think it was six starts, and he had uh, he had some back spasms, and they they shut him. They they he was actually warming up to start the game, and they just took him out. They just didn't wouldn't even throw. You know, they just took him out of the game. Well, so um, they're going to be careful with him, and this is yeah. a big year for him. Yep. You know, he's, he's got to show a little durability and a little, That's up right. of, a little building up of innings. That's and if right. he pitched 70 last year, then the yep. goal is probably to have him pitch 120 this year. Yeah, he pitched, a, he pitched a lot his first year in pro ball. He was number three in all of the minor leagues in, in strikeouts. Wow. And, uh, yeah, he, he was act number three, triple-A, double-A, A-ball, all of them. He was number three. Uh he was flirting with staying, you know, the number one guy, which was nice. He threw, he, he, you know, he threw a lot. He was fine though. He was totally fine. You okay. Know. So maybe it was an abnormality last year. Yep. And that's you know what? what we see. He's stronger than ever, Jeff. He's got a great He's, baseball name. That's for sure. Ryan oh, Murphy. absolutely. And, yeah. and, and, so, and you have a great entertainment name with Charlie Murphy. You know, Charlie Murphy. Yeah. 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 A lot different than the Charlie Murphy I knew, believe me. <laughs> you, have to watch, you have to watch what you say to people in terms of disclosing. I remember a shout at 1 a.m. I didn't know if I should say, Jeff, my stomach's not feeling well. Jeff, I have a chance to get lucky. Can I leave early? <laughs> so yeah. I know you. It, it takes a little to be able to. But you're right. Uh, yeah. You don't know what you should say, but you know what? Yeah. He's got he thought it. Score. He thought he's it was better to him. err yeah. by saying no, something. Absolutely. You know? It's better to be honest with them because they're the, if you're not honest with them, and you get hurt. They're going to say you're, you know, a punk. And if you well, you know what else, and you need you to take care else? of yourself. Absolutely. You know what else too is um, a lot of his friends. You know, a lot of his buddies there have said have said not said things, and their arm went south. Right. And then they're done. Then they're done. They're done. Right. And you don't done. want that. You don't want that. Yeah. So it was probably, I believe it was really fatigued that day. And, and uh, I think he pushed it and he strained it in that well, game. You said, Chuck, also, he had a long travel, like it was a 14 hour day. He yep. was in a different zone. He had to yep. travel 14 hours, Jeff. And yep. so he had no rest. He was up. Yep. So, yeah, I could see where that would, and you're nervous as hell. Nervous. You know, so and, hell and then the temperatures were absolutely, I was at that game. Yeah. And it was, Freaking hot, man. And he told me his jersey felt like it was 20 pounds. They were trying to give him some electrolytes in the dugout, you know, you, you know, to get through that first inning. He made it and he, he made it four innings, but you know, they he struggled in that first inning. He threw 32 pitches, which is an he, he struck out three guys in the inning, but gave up four runs. Yeah, you know, I remember I was listening remember that? to that before we wrap up. We need your Super Bowl prediction. Ah, you know. My, uh, I'm not a Philly fan in general. Um, Me neither. All, all Philly products, by the yeah, way. I'm <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, I'm not sorry, but, um, you know, uh, I'm rooting for Kansas Thank City. You. I, I, if I, I feel like I can't go out on the limb and I'm kind of wishy washy because I feel like Philadelphia is going to win. I feel like Philadelphia is. If they can, it, but it's a bunch of ifs. So if Philadelphia can run the ball like they can run the ball, and they got three big weapons too. That I, I don't know if Hilaire coming back to. I like Pache, uh, Pacheco with uh, Kansas yeah. City. Seven round draft choice out of Rutgers. Yeah, and he's a beast. He is. I mean, if he's, you, and if he's you, fast too. He's really fast and yeah. quick, and he's just he's he's one of those. This is my moment. I'm crazy, and I'm gonna just play my ass off because. You know, this is my chance, and this is what you should do. And he plays like that. He, he like does. his hair's on fire. You and know, and they have McKinnon, McKinnon in the back, and McKinnon, too. which they didn't even use in that last game very much. Yeah. I think, I think, I, I want it to be a close game. You know, I, I'm, I'm going for Kansas City, so I don't know what the spread is right now. One and a um, half. What is it? One and a half. So we're, we're yeah. all kind of like leaning both ways. It's like when they asked me what I thought of Broke Back Mountain. I said, loved him, hated him. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was wrong with Broke Back Mountain, man? Well, yeah, right. Vinny, Vinny's not, Vinny's not I have to be back wrong, rider, you know. so don't throw me off. But, you know, a little, like little too much kissing from, it was just a little too much kissing for me, Broke Back Mountain. That, that, that's all. <laughs> 
I'm so not into that anymore. Philly. You, know? you think Philly's going to win even though you don't like Philly I, in terms of liking Philly? I'm rooting for Kansas City, but I feel like Philadelphia um, – God, if Philadelphia can throw the ball, I think they're going to win. I think KC wins big, by yeah. two touchdowns. But I like Can- – I think Kansas City can- – I think Kansas City – that could blow them out. But if Kansas, City, if Kansas City can take away that running game some, if they yeah. can score early and, like like you say, two, two touchdowns, they put up 10 points, maybe not 10. You know, I, I think Kansas City needs to go up and, and not have them run the ball as much, and I think they can beat Philly that way. They got to score. I think it'll be like 38-17, and Philly will grab one the last two minutes of the game. Wow. I think they win by two touchdowns. Wow. You're, picking a, you're picking a route. I am. Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, it's a, it's a big – don't underestimate Reed and Mahomes as yeah. a team. No. I don't sure. like Sirianni. I think he's a punk. But, um, you know, like I said, Patrick's going to have some opportunity to beat them deep. If he can do that, yep. that'll, that'll deflate them a little bit. But that Philadelphia defensive line, that's no joke. 70 sacks and six guys that can do it. Yep. It's going to be a tough game. I think Scantling, the Scantling had that monster game uh, where a lot oh, of yeah. guys were hurt. Yeah. Um, I see they just put Hardeman. They they put well, Hardeman on injury reserve. Right, that's why they brought back Hilaire. But McCole Hard Hardman was their jet sweep guy and a good receiver. That was a yep. big loss. You yep. don't know, like I said, you don't know how hurt Schuster is. Yeah, and you also don't know Kadarius Tony is is man that yep. guy can fly. Yeah, but you don't know that they're in, you know, they've had two weeks to get healthy. So yep. may the best team those, win. That's it. Those question marks. I think. I think all in all, uh, the Chiefs have so much. I don't know, Mahomes. It's the. I, I'm not. I like both quarterbacks. I mean, I like Hurts. Me too. You know, I like him. Um, I just think that Mahomes is. I don't know. I think it's this. He's. I think he'll pull. I. I don't know. I'm going towards Kansas City. I think Kansas City's going to pull out. But I Legacy. think it's a close game. I think like a that's, four point game. That's what I think. It's going to be. I think it's going to be a close game. And like I told Vinny, it's a legacy game for Mahomes yeah. because if he loses, they're like, "Oh, you lost again in the Super Bowl." But and what's your excuse now? But if he wins, yeah. he's got two now in the last what four years. So yeah, yeah. Vinny, I'm going to lose power now. I'm going to have to go. Yeah. Listen, I'm going I'm gonna, out to, mine's thank going you too, so sorry. much, guys. Jeff, yeah. I will call you tomorrow about my trip. Chuck, thank you for yeah. coming on. Yeah. Nice I meeting you, Jeff. You soon. Same here, Chuck. Vinny. Good luck with Good Ryan. Soon. Yep, thanks, man. Good luck with Ryan. Thank you. All Bye, right, guys. Man. Take care, Vinny. Bye. There you go. Two great guys. A new dear friend and an old dear friend. Not chronologically. They're not old. But, um, yeah, so there you go. Kansas City. Thank you guys for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you to uh, Dave Cameron, who I made a um, a members only show for him, which I think he'll really enjoy. Dave, you'll be getting that if you watch this on the replay. Uh, some tidbits. Next week, I'll have on Greg Peters. Go check out who he is. He's a renowned Elvis impersonator who has been a a St. Jude's uh, what's the best word to put it? It's not even uh, a delegate for them. Uh, He's raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh, you're welcome, Teresa. Hundreds of thousands of dollars for St. Jude's, much more than I have, but we've been connected that way. And um, fundraiser, I guess. And he's uh, he's been renowned, world renowned. So I will have him on next week, probably Tuesday. And it might have to be an evening show. I don't know if he's available four or five. So if that's the case, if it's Tuesday or when, uh, well, if it's Wednesday, I'm sorry, because I do when. No, I'm sorry, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday I do the show, but I won't get a hold of him until Monday. So probably be Wednesday's show. Yes, Larry. Good luck to Ryan. Anyway, um, yeah, so, you know, trying to change the format out. Didn't have a lot of viewers today. Hopefully, I'll pick up some viewers on the uh, the replay of this. But my views have been going up. I've, I've been seeing 400, 500, which I'm, I'm humbled by. And that's because I spoke to the gentleman that does the mental health channel, and a lot of his viewers have been watching this. So uh, we're going to do a show within the next couple of weeks on um, – 
mental living with mental illness and the ramifications trolls ramifications means uh i can't even explain it uh the disbenefits and and the uh the outcome uh and you know i thank you all for always being part of the show you guys are the show as you see and uh thank you for everyone that came in to all the content providers that i'm friends with uh thank you teresa how i was cold you know i'm wearing a a, a, a blue shirt here but uh i threw this on so um yeah, the content providers all well, i'm going to have a show which will be a post super bowl show i'm going to a super bowl party uh, it was supposed to be in vegas actually i don't know if i'm going to actually get on the plane if i do i'll be back tuesday if not uh i will uh do a a show i'm going to ask joey bayef i'm going to ask jason jsv capital chuck and jeff Thank you, Teresa. I appreciate that. Uh, now, we are going to do a Super Bowl. I'll get my Mr. Hockey on, the analyst. I know he likes the Super Bowl. I think he's going to go to the Super Bowl this year. I got an offer to go to the Super Bowl. Uh, and, and it was like uh, not the whole package was two grand, which isn't bad. It's just the uh, – I, I don't. I didn't think I could do all the walking with my ankle. I probably – who am I bullshit? I probably wouldn't have gone anyway. I don't like football enough to spend $2,000 on it. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Hey, oh, um, I don't like football enough to spend two grand on it. And on, yeah, Kim's. I'm gonna ask them to come on. Yeah, we were on last. If you watch uh, NB show with him yesterday, uh, I went on for about 15 minutes with them. It was great to see NB and my sis, I call her, and Joey. It was amazing. And yeah, I'm going to invite, invite both of them on my show. This is NB's welcome if she wants to come on. Um, she's she's terrific. But um, yeah, so we'll get Joey on and uh, we'll do a sports thing for you because Jason JSV he he's very knowledgeable with sports. He's very, yeah, Kim's. If you go to her show at maybe halfway in her and Joey show, yeah, I, I went on for about fifteen minutes and talking, and it was nice to see her. I hadn't uh, been on anybody's show really. And I've been asked to come on a couple, and I, I probably will do a couple. Um, don't know why they'd want me, but nice enough. Well, they're my friends. So, yeah, we're going to change it. We're going to change it up a bit. More interviews on here. I will do once a week. I will do a mental health clinic, which will be pretty much the life and health I've gone through seven of them now, about 30, 28 hours. And uh, I'm a month in, and I have another five months until I get the first certificate, another two months after that for the total certification. I'm going for life and health. And I'm just trying to help people. And if it works out, it works out. I'll always have it, even if I'm not good at it. I'll always have it, and maybe it'll help me. So it was worth the money. But once again, if you haven't joined as a member, um, you don't have to, as you see. But if you do, the benefits are you will get Brooklyn stories that sit downs and stuff that I don't say on here. And I don't make you sign an exclusivity agreement, but you, I trust you guys. So you can look into that if you want. And a lot of money goes to charity, honestly. Thank you, Kim. I really, and you always make me happy. You're always really nice. And and all of you are so nice. You, you guys are friends. You got to remember, you you aren't, you know, I don't have 250 viewers where I can't keep track. They're not friends. You know, you can't possibly know. And you got to, let me tell you something. I don't care what anybody says. When you have 250 viewers, 150 of them don't like you. Absolutely don't like you. They're tuning in to see, you're getting from every other channel to see what you're talking about. Uh, I don't have that because I don't talk about anybody. But that's okay because I don't want that. So I'm glad that I've met friends. I've met more friends with my small, small, the, the smallest channel of everybody than probably a lot of the other channels. So 
That's all I ever wanted. For people to make me feel better as I try to make them feel better. And believe me, you've probably done a hell of a lot better job than I have. But I continue to try to make you happy or at least entertained a bit. And to know that I'm on your side, which is definitely true. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Thank you for Chuck for coming on. I know he was rushing around. Thank you to Jeff, my dear friend. I think I'm going to come out in two weeks to visit you for a couple of days. Jeff has that. I'll fly to Florida to say hi. So you guys, be well. Stay strong. Don't get sick on me. I don't need that. And don't take any shit from anybody. <laughs>